In the last video, I showed you what can go wrong with Gaussian elimination if you don't do any row interchanges. In this video, I'll show you the correct algorithm for doing Gaussian elimination on the computer when you're sometimes dealing with thousands of equations. Uh, that's called Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting. Partial pivoting will mean row interchanges. Full pivoting means both row and column interchanges. It's possible to an, have an algorithm that does that, but typically uh, it's considered not necessary. So row interchanges are enough, and that's why we call it partial pivoting. So let's go back to our system of equations. Epsilon is machine epsilon, the distance between one and the next largest number. So our equation is epsilon x1 plus 2x2 equals 4, and x1 minus x2 equals 1. The Gaussian elimination procedure uh, puts it in a matrix again. So we have epsilon 2, 4, and 1 minus 1, 1. OK. Uh, without partial pivoting, we just went ahead and used epsilon as a pivot. In the algorithm with partial pivoting, what we do is that we go down the column that we're considering. Now we're considering the first column. And we look for the number in that column that is of largest magnitude. Okay, it can be positive or negative, but we look for the value that is of largest magnitude. If it's a tie, we just take the first one. Okay? So if we go down the first column, we have epsilon, which is really small, and 1. So 1 has the largest magnitude. So what we do is a row interchange where we move this 1 into the pivot. So we swap the rows. So we have 1 minus 1, 1, epsilon, 2, 4. That's equivalent to just changing the order of the equations, so a valid operation for Gaussian elimination. Now we use the 1 as the pivot. So the first row is 1 minus 1, 1. Then we zero out the epsilon here. So we need to multiply by minus epsilon and add. So we end up with 2 plus epsilon. And we multiply by minus epsilon and add. So we end up with 4 minus epsilon. And that's the Gaussian elimination procedure. OK, 2 plus epsilon is 2. 4 minus epsilon is 4, right? So if we write the equation from the second row, we would have 2 plus epsilon. Let me just hold on to it for now, times x2. Uh, equals 4 minus epsilon, which is, because of round-off error, becomes 2x2 equals 4, which tells us x2 equals 2, right? Same result that we got last time. But now we go to the first row. The first row is x1, um, x1, minus x2 equals 1. And now we know the value of x2 equals 2, so we get x1 equals 1 uh, plus x2 plus 2 equals 3. That is a good approximation to the solution. So we've solved our problem of round-off error. Even though 2 plus epsilon equals 2 and 4 minus epsilon equals 4, it hasn't ruined our result. x2 is still 2, but now we have a very reasonable equation um, for x1, and we get the value of 3. Remarkably, this almost always works. Uh, Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting gives us good answers. Um, generally, it gives us good answers and uh, reduces uh, round-off error. This was one of the great discoveries in numerical analysis because initially it was thought it would be hopeless to solve thousands of equations 
and thousands on unknowns on the computer because of round-off error. He had a very simple solution, partial pivoting, completely solved the problem. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.